what what would need to happen? I guess what was the bigger goal of the you know Madden movement on Twitter? What would need to happen for um, at the NFL to just say, you know what, <laughs> you guys are doing such a horrendous job. You're just misrepresenting our product. You're making our brand look lose value, right? We want to like drop the license deal, right? Yeah. How crazy would that be? That seems like an impossible thing. Like, <laughs> so uh, the point of the hashtags that I started was to. Um get the NFL's attention. And it was kind of like a pipe dream, basically, that the NFL would see the public uh, dissatisfaction and and decide to do something. Of course, I'm sure they saw that it was trending, but I just don't think they care. I think the the goal here is to get the NFL to open up their license and let other companies make a simulation game. um, Because no company is going to make a generic NFL game without the license because no one's going to, the casual gamer won't buy that. Um, as much as I would buy it. So I, I think the solution is opening up the license. But the only way I see that happening is if the NFL loses a ton of money because that's all they care about. They're a business too. All they care about is making money. And of course, if Madden 21 sold more copies than ever before, I don't know how that's ever going to happen. <laughs> so it just kind of sucks. I I think an equally... Um, difficult task, but I think a, a better one to shoe for, if you ask me, is for EA to start losing money, and that is actually that's actually very doable in today's kind of climate. I want to say, especially with the controversies surrounding you know online gambling, loot boxes. Um, if you don't know, FIFA is still Peggy Three game, even though it has a manipulative loot box system that is pretty easy to access for kids. So um, I think I sent you a link of a petition that mm-hmm. has ended we're kind, of, we're kind of waiting to see what happens if if the uk would clamp down on this i think governments are not dumb i think these video game companies are getting kind of greedier and greedier and they've kind of overstepped their boundaries and i think when you start you know talking about protecting children from you know these loot boxes from online gambling that's that's your best bet that's literally their our best bet to legitimately stop ea they lose some money Uh, You know, they open up some doors maybe for other people to get in, like Konami to overtake them or something like that. I don't know. Madden 2K maybe comes in, throws down a lot of money, says, you know what, we're going we're going all in and then go from there. Yeah, I I do think that's another big issue, because uh, another reason EA can get by with making these terrible games is because even if the sales do go down, the microtransactions make them the most revenue. So Absolutely. if if they um if if they were unable to like make have people like pay for packs and all that stuff like if that was banned and you just had to earn them in game and there was no microtransactions I think they'd have to improve the rest of their game even without competition just to get people to yes, buy it. Yeah, that's and... true. Yeah, right. I didn't think about that. Yeah, of course. So that's that's another way. I think the ideal situation with Madden for example is the license is opened up and microtransactions are, are no longer a thing unless it's like story mode DLC or something like that. That's fine with me. But if it's like if it's to buy packs that give you a chance of getting a card, like I think that is stupid. I think you I think packs are fine if you can unlock them in the game and there's no money involved. But when you have like a open market and you have these microtransactions, it's just man, it sucks. I saw people like competitive Madden players who basically they they play ultimate team and then they try to uh like rank high enough where they get invited to tournaments. They've said they've spent thousands and thousands this year yes. just to stay competitive and it it's crazy. It's so <laughs> same stupid. with FIFA, same with FIFA, dude. Absolutely the same thing. It's crazy. Yeah. So it, it, okay, here's here's the funny part. Here's the funny part. With with um football, I don't know if you know the structure of football, but basically you can have um clubs just put a lot of money you can have this dude from saudi arabia come in buy a club and say you know i want to put this in this much money he, he gr- grows the club in stature by acquiring all these big players and then of course they're competing for the biggest tournaments in football and fifa has kind of become that in a weird way because the competitive mode is based on ultimate team which is as anyone would know, pay to win. Right. So now we're at a situation where you have clubs, like real world clubs, like Manchester, uh, Manchester City, um, I don't know, West Ham, sign a professional FIFA player and then give him a budget of 2,000 pounds, let's say, when the game starts, so they can invest it in the game and buy virtual players 
to compete against other clubs who have hired other professionals to do the same. I I think it's so <laughs> stupid. It's so stupid. <laughs> like it, that's how backwards we are. I feel like Ultimate Team. It would. I don't play Ultimate Team because I think the whole idea is stupid, and I'm. It's not going to be worth my time to endlessly grind to get to a point where I can compete. Um, I think the ideal. I think the mode would be a fun game mode if it was. You didn't have to spend any money because you already spent sixty dollars on the game. I, I, you should be able to, uh, you know, you it's a much should be a much much easier grind to unlock things, and then pretty much anyone should be able to put together whatever team they want and their skill to see how high they can rank up. You know, there shouldn't be this this money wall barrier to compete. 